even if physical touch is the lowest on your five love languages, it's still absolutely vital to his ego mm-hmm. and well being, and therefore the productiveness of your relationship. You're going to get more out of him in a positive light when you when you touch that man, touch the man, touch your mm-hmm. man in any which way, form, or fashion. Welcome back to Muse on the Mic. I'm Riley. And I'm Emily. Thanks for joining us again on another great episode of Muse on the Mic. We've got another heartwarming one today. Riley, tell everyone what we're getting into. (laughs) We're getting into a repeat of our favorite episodes, which are our men's episodes. And a few videos we're going to react to today. They're really heartwarming. Um, Some being real conversation pieces. So we're going to watch them with you guys and chat about it. I love it. You know, these are my favorite. I just love our men's appreciation because I feel men are not appreciated enough. And some of their perspectives are glazed over or not even acknowledged. And we're about to jump into some that I know are going to hit some feels for a lot of guys and might irk some of the babes watching. So watch and learn. It happens. So I think the first one we're going to do is from Emily King. It's a Facebook video. Actually, they're all from Facebook. So we'll jump into the first one from Emily King. Somebody tell me why it's always the guys who have been in long-term relationships that suck in bed. Anybody else going to take this one? You know what? I, you know what, fellas? I got this one. Everyone, sit down. I, I got this one. Uh, ma'am, you're going to want to scooch up and uh, grab some popcorn because I'm going to tell you exactly why most men who have been in long-term relationships suck in bed. Because the women that have these men in long-term relationships have weaponized sex. What do you mean? Tags, how the how have they weaponized sex? Well, most of us that are used to long-term relationships are only rewarded. I know that sounds crazy. Rewarded with sex when we do something they want us to do. It's no longer about pleasure or making the other one each other happy or learning each other's bodies or experiencing new things. It's strictly a reward proce- process. Very much Pavlov's theory, you know, when we get it once in a while, we start doing things to try to get it again. And every time we we think we're going to get it, we start salivating. So we continue to do those things that they want. So we hopefully get it. Bottom line is this. It's not that we suck in bed. It's just that the women we've been with in these long term relationships suck, period. However, when we are released to the wild, when we go back to the streets, as they say, we pick up on the tricks pretty quick. Just saying. Whew. I love her her perspective. Well, his perspective, but her oh. highlighting it. I should I should say that because a lot of her videos are a stitch where she's kind of just focusing on another creator. Um, but gosh, did he preach to the choir in that one? I feel it so much in my heart. I've got personal connections to situations like this as someone who had been in a sexless relationship myself. It is terrible. And I have so many opinions on it. However, (laughs) let's talk about what he said, because I think his opinions and his insight was really enlightening and really nail on the head. What What did you take from it, Riley? Well, I mean, he didn't touch on this aspect, but what it it screamed to me, I think sex for men, you know what, I think sex for both parties, but in particular men, I think when you get to a place in your relationship where there's a lack of respect, and I mean, we've talked about this, like we have a need to respect um, our partner for them, for us to put them in that kind of dom position, someone we listen to, or an authority or a partnership, that I think when respect is lost, For a man, he doesn't, his sex drive isn't going. His ego is bruised. He feels devalued. Um, So I don't think they're invested in the same way. It's true. And I think the easiest way to break a man down like that is woman he loves and remove affection. I think it immediately changes the way that man operates, the way he feels about himself, his family, his place in the home, his purpose in a relationship. It can cause him to check out even more which Mm -hmm. will only make a situation like that worse, right? 
if one partner's already taking the intimacy away, the physical stuff, um, that's really hard to bring back together as a connection if there aren't real formidable changes. And that goes to communication, respect, behavior, effort. Like there's, there's so many elements to it. I think the way he kind of coined it, like weaponized, I think is really nail mm -hmm. on the head. I've always kind of quoted it as women often use sex as a reward system, which technically is a behavior modification tool. And if you mm -hmm. want to train a puppy or you want to train your child to follow rules, you get an allowance when you do your chores, you get a gold sticker when you do something right, or you get a treat when you sit or roll over. And I absolutely despise the concept of, oh, you took out the garbage. Okay. You get a little hand job in, in the shower or like these little reward systems. Or if you do anything bad, then you're not getting any nookie and you're sleeping on the couch. Like I just find those things who wins in that situation? It, it bothers me. There's um, an expression that Dr. Phil used to say, who I used to love, don't anymore because of his politics. I'll nick that there. But he used to say, when you fight with your partner in that kind of tit for tat manner, someone has to come out the winner and the loser. And so that means someone in this fight wants the other person to be the loser. And the concept right. of being like, I want my husband to be the loser is so like profound and horrible and that's the tone of how you're navigating this this relationship or this dynamic or this debate how are you going to come out as a as a couple or as a relationship on top when one person's the winner and one person's definitively a loser i cannot imagine wishing for my partner to be a loser in any stretch and words matter the tone of things matter and how you speak to your husband in those moments or your partner your boyfriend whatever it really makes a difference. And so if you're trying to modify his behavior and then if he doesn't do it right now, he's the loser on the couch. What is this relationship? Like, what are you even doing? Forget for the kids and all this other bullshit for yourself. What, what are you actually yeah. doing? You've no business being in any relationship if that's how you conduct yourself. And we see the fruit of that harm in our industry every single day and it sounds weird to say fruit and harm because usually it's fruits of labor and we see the detriments right. and the amount of customers that come in is directly reflective of how many people operate like that in their relationships i i hate to to be on the woman's side here but i think sometimes we we should be it's not you know women are not always, you know, completely to blame in these relationships. And there's a sure. different perspective to things that you need to look at. And I think it does boil down to communication. I think the men need to communicate that they crave more intimacy other than just sex. They do crave physical touch because I think as a woman, we just assume. And so if we're assuming he's always looking for sex or that's the reward or that's what he wants, maybe it's not always that she's dangling the carrot. Like if you do this for me, I will have sex with you. Right. Maybe she just thinks, wow, I really appreciate him. He did that. Let me have sex with him because that's how she knows to show him love. And there is other ways to show men love but they need to communicate that and i mean you need to know your partner really so yeah. you know maybe that's a blaring obvious thing <laughs> that they need to get to know each other a little bit better mm. and that comes into having deep conversations there's so many couples out there that never get to that they can be married 20 years never had those kind of conversations yeah. but i think tone really matters because it's one thing to go to your hubby and say you know i've been bugging you to clean out the attic for like six years now the fact that while i was away on a girl's trip i came home and the attic was done i'm so appreciative i love you get in that bedroom about to show you is way yeah. different than oh you remembered the the dry cleaning i guess i have to put out tonight like it's the tone right. of things right because are you really that thrilled to, to become like, are you going to become like sex goddess all of a sudden? Because yay, he took out the garbage. Good boy. Like it's just got such a different, almost demeaning tone to it that that's not sexy. Even if that were your role play, there's a way to go about being the boss bitch and he's the little bitch yeah. that can still be respectful to the overall relationship and a relationship that should have goals. How are you accomplishing? Like, what is the objective here? What are we getting to? 
And there's different milestones through relationships, right? Marriage, buying a home, having kids, retiring, empty nesters, like an excuse is to become not just more intimate, but intimate differently and different phases of who you are as a couple. You're totally different people at each of those intervals in your life. But as you said, the communication is so important because your needs will change through all of that. And so during child rearing like ages, it might become very important for the husband to suddenly feel some sort of physical connection because so much physical energy is drained into those damn kids that you're like, but what about us? And and I hate Mm -hmm. sometimes stories about how husbands can behave immediately after a newborn and get very jealous. But it's the the contrast of the difference that just suddenly everything changed. And it's almost like she doesn't care about me. So again, communicating about that. It's fair to say, I feel this and I feel this, and then come to a solution. Because if the solution is, okay, we need a nanny who lives in the house so that we can actually have breakfast together once in a while, or mm-hmm. we're gonna take that trip. And as soon as we're done breastfeeding, we're gonna get grandma to watch the kiddos. Like you have to make these milestones and make these efforts so that you're on the same page even as different people as you evolve and grow. And I don't mm-hmm. think eliminating a, a, a huge love language is going to get you to those goals in a happy manner. That's that's a one-way mm-hmm. ticket to divorce and misery as far as I'm concerned. Or living like roommates, which so yeah. many, too many people do, right? We hear it all the time. It, it's one of those things that if you're taking that away There's nothing to replace it. It, It's not Mm -hmm. a swap out like you do with like a diet. You don't eat carbs, you eat more protein. Like it's not that easy a switch. And the one thing that differentiates every other relationship from an intimate partner is the sex aspect. It is the touching of other people's bodies and parts and fun times and secret times in the dark and naughty stuff and all that shit. And when you take that out, you've got a what? You've got a roommate who don't talk, who don't have the same goals, who are evolving into different people on completely different pages. And then once in a while he gets a treat. Talk about an awkward blowjob. <laughs> yeah. Terrible. I think it makes me think too of one of our recent episodes um, that came out actually this week about the husband that pays the, the wife for sex. Because mm-hmm. well, there's a solution, right? Not everyone's favorite solution. There's been a controversy with that. And you can check out the comment section. <laughs> but Listen, sometimes you got to find a way. <clears throat> and if it helps you prioritize that intimacy again, well, then that's what it has to do. Ignoring it or just removing it is going to end up bigger problems for your relationship. And especially mm-hmm. for the man, it's going to beat down his ego so much that he's going to be unproductive in other parts of his life. And that that doesn't get a family ahead. That's crazy. True. Well, and I mean, I think the sex should be an experience. And I mean, Of course, we all realize there's times and places for a quickie, but in general, it should be an experience that you have together. And I think to say, you know, why does he suck in bed now that we're in a long term relationship is because it's not an experience anymore. He didn't suck before. So why is it now? So you're giving him that human need. He needs you know, physical contact, he needs ejaculation. These are, you know, scientific facts. You're just giving him that you're not having an experience with him. Oh, that's so good. He didn't suck before. Like you married him for a reason. You bedded him and made children or did the dirty at some point with this man. And Mm -hmm. anything can get a little rusty when you don't have any practice. Goodness. I mean, yeah, there's riding a bike, but there's also doing it well. (laughs) Really really awfully where you need a helmet and some knee pads. Listen, if you're doing sex right, you might need a helmet and knee pads anyway. But the premise being, like you said, you're having an experience which creates a memory. And quickies can be part of that too. I remember the first time I had a quickie in a laundry room on a on a like dryer that was like mid cycle. And I was like, this is wild. It's just like the movies. But it, it, was was, an it became a core memory, right? Like you remember that shit because it's a little, quickies always have a little risque element. You're either mm-hmm. fighting the clock or fighting strangers or hoping no one will see you and just squeezing it in. That's a hot little memory that's just between mom and dad. It has nothing to do with everything else going on like in the house or in the world or in their life. You have to make those important little moments still happen to maintain the intimacy in an intimate partnership. Otherwise, mm-hmm. you're barely partners because it's not a business like relationship. They don't have a contract. You know, <laughs> we have more intimacy than people like that because <laughs> we've talked out every nitty gritty damn detail down to like the dotted T's and or cross T's and dotted I's, you know, like 
there, there's something about the openness to converse that I think is really important. And so many people get jammed up in the busyness of, of day to day that you can lose all that stuff. And it really sucks, I think, for a couple when they started off really good and then life just snowballs. And it's like six years later where you're on the couch one day and you look over and you're like, who are you? Like you've, you've lost your way yeah. so much that you didn't even notice. It's, it's a terrible you- reality. It, really it is, is a reality for so many, but it's a reality you can come back from. Yes. But again, it, it communication can be tricky and it can feel uncomfortable, especially if you don't feel really connected to your partner. But yes. I think it's important to remember that you once did and this once came easy. So if if only mm. he could communicate because he, the man has to take some onus here, like unless he's had the conversations where he said, you know what? I enjoy sex with you, but I enjoyed it better when it happened this way. Or you know what? That's not the only way to show me affection or appreciation. I'd also like this. If he's doing all those things and and communicating, then shame on her. But I think the guys really do need to reflect and say, have I given her all the information, all the tools Mm -hmm. that she needs to understand me? Definitely. I think that leads us right into our next video because Mm -hmm. it really focuses on the power of touch and how important that is. Even if it's not your main love language, it's a vital one, especially Mm -hmm. in an intimate partnership. So let's show the people that one and then we'll continue on when we, when we come back. Let's go. You know, I just need a minute and a half of your time. Stopped in at the local choke and puke last night. And some ladies behind me sitting there belly aching about the men. Kind of got under my skin, so I whirled around and gave them a little advice. And one girl said, I think he don't love me anymore. He just wants me for sex. That struck me wrong. You see, women train men that the only time that they get intimacy is during sex. You see, men are valued for what they can provide and and not how they can love and most men they they sit back and and if they voice their opinion or voice their feelings then they hurt your feelings and then you have to comfort the woman because you hurt your their feelings with your feelings you see where i'm going with this maybe maybe some of you women should try to Love a man the way he needs to be loved instead of the way you want to be loved. It's, it's not right. I, I, I'm not understanding how how we can get to this point in life. You know, the, the best rest that I ever got was when the old lady sat in my lap and covered my ears with her hands and blocked out the world. And... You can't even find a woman sitting in a man's lap no more. It's not, it's not there. People don't understand that a man wants touch. He wants to feel something. And if that's the only place that you'll give it to him is in the bedroom, then that's what he's going to take advantage of. Maybe you ought to realize that a minute. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Think about it. Oh, again, I got so much to say (laughs) as always, but you know what? Some of the, some of the lines, I wrote down some of the lines he said specifically because they jumped out to me immediately, like struck me right in the chest. I love when someone could say something with their full chest, like full meaning behind it because it's got impact. And he really impacted me a lot. Um, he, He referenced the fact that there are ways or, or times when a man needs to feel intimacy and it shouldn't only be through sex. Intimacy right. shouldn't only come from that. And yes, intimacy can mean snuggling on the couch, holding hands, you know, uh, the kiss and hug before someone leaves for their day at work or comes back home. It can be those little things. It can be non non-touch or non-verbal, sending little texts, putting a love note in someone's lunch. Like there's other little ways that create all of that intimacy and it all comes together that should lead to making it easier to get into sexual intimacy. It should already set the tone or set the stage. I'd almost call it pre-foreplay because Mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be so overtly sexual that it's like we're fluffing them up for tonight. 
it could just be gentle reminders throughout a day or throughout a week or, or through a moment or a phase of life where you reassure your partner and you physically reach out and touch them and say, hey, you're doing a great job or I really appreciate what you did with the kids today or I'm so proud of you on your promotion and give him a lingering hug. Like there's mm -hmm. little, little tiny ways that you can make a man feel so appreciated. And I think even if physical touch is the lowest on your five love languages, it's still absolutely vital to his ego mm -hmm. and well-being and therefore the productiveness of your relationship. You're going to get more out of him in a positive light when you when you touch that man, touch the man, touch your mm -hmm. man in any which way, form or fashion. Yeah. And I think for women to to overall have the opinion or this group of women that he he saw at the bar that I think my husband only wants me for sex. I, I wonder if they would do a little test, because if I were the one, you know, being in that bar overhearing them, that's what I would say to do is, you know what, go to bed and snuggle with your man. Let's see. I mean, maybe yeah. his penis gets hard because he's laying next to his wife. So, you know, Good. bravo if it does. But what if it doesn't? What if he just wants that hug? And if they think having int intimacy is the only way to get close to you, well, it's no wonder that's what they're always after because they're craving that closeness as well. It's absolutely true. Um, I think I think you touched a bit on that because you're you're eliminating so much of the regular vanilla stuff that all you're giving him is these little sexual rewards sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so all he gets is sexual tidbits of touch. And so no wonder he's equated, oh, when I go in the bedroom and I do this, this, and this and get my gold star, then I can be physically touched. And that's an awful way to navigate through life. You're almost on eggshells all the time or like checking your report card to see if you qualify. And, and that's just, again, like it, it barely works with, with nurturing children and rearing them. Like ask any teacher, they'll be like, oh, that shit barely works. We still have half the kids like not getting recess or something because of their behavior. It shouldn't be that you're trying to modify an adult's behavior using or withholding physical intimacy. I think it's crazy. The fact that at the end of that video, he stressed, we just want to feel something punched me right in the gut mm -hmm. because I think we see that so hyper-focused at Muse and, and the, the clients that come in. There are definitely clients that come in and ask for full service or want all the mileage and all the freaky deaky stuff. But we hear time and again about stories of clients that just want to cuddle or just want to talk. It's It might sound strange to your average customer going, who's paying someone 250 bucks an hour to talk? That's not a licensed therapist that you right. can claim on your, your benefits, right? Mm -hmm. Like just a hot girl to listen. And to be honest, the hotness is irrelevant at that point. It's human right. connection. It's a woman. It's a woman paying nurturing attention to you eager to listen, connected, tuned in, being an active listener and, and participating in your struggle or in your pain or in your story. And to have someone that listens like that, literally in our four walls of, of a private room, it's just one-on-one, -on -one, it's calm and romantic and focused to get that kind of attention at home. For some people, they're you could spend a million dollars and you still won't get that. And mm -hmm. so the fact that just to have that connection or that human experience needs to be outsourced outside of a marriage is not the best situation mm -hmm. for any marriage. Great for Muse's income, but terrible for the overall productiveness of these relationships. I think you said it in a recent episode too, that these sexless marriages living as roommates, it's an epidemic in the world. Mm -hmm. It is so prevalent. Nobody talks about it. We see it bombarded every day. And it's like we're part of this secret world where if you asked regular, jegular women, they'd be very defensive. I, I right. tried not to scroll too hard through the comments on these two videos. It's infuriating.
It's infuriating. And I'm not going to sit here and completely bash women. I was on the men's side in the relationship that I had that was sexless. I am a woman. And no matter how much I tried what I dressed up in, the role play, the lingerie, the ideas, the little touches, the the build up a man before you tear him down and all that shit did absolutely nothing in my circumstance. In fact, backfired on me very often and led to heated arguments and debate or long periods of silence. And it was, it was very terrible. Um, so it's not always men, but to the person that it is being withheld from, it is so abusive. It is so detrimental to their mental health, to their well being, And the women in some of these comments in absolute denial, like, okay, I get you want someone to help with chores around the house. That's a separate issue for a separate discussion that mm-hmm. completely has nothing to do with the fact that you're abusing your partner by withholding the main piece that's supposed to keep you together. It just yep. hits such a core in me that to hear something as simple as we just want to feel something is mm-hmm. so telling. That means in your everyday, he's feeling nothing nothing well you're freaking out about all these little details and what flowers to plant or how we're going to renovate the living room or whatever little busybody things people keep up to in in the end of every day this man is laying in bed beside you thinking about the life he wishes he had because he's Mm -hmm. not getting it at home and he's seeking that out at some point elsewhere be it an affair a mistress a sex worker doesn't matter even through a friend or just why he's always at the bar or playing video games or whatever he's checked out into he is seeking refuge from home and that is that wouldn't be acceptable if your child was like that you want a child that doesn't feel safe at home you wouldn't want to be a wife that doesn't feel that way at home and to keep a man in a situation like that is literally tearing him to pieces one day at a time one rejection after another and and i personally can vouch for that feeling i've spent thousands of dollars in therapy to get through that feeling because it's it's awful i wouldn't wish it on some of my worst i don't think i have really enemies i think our industry is enemies but i wouldn't wish that on people i dislike i really wouldn't because it's that horrible it's that horrible there's other ways to go through hard shit without it almost breaking your spirit and a man with a broken spirit and and therefore an ineffective penis an ineffective sex drive an ineffective like recycling of all the the healthy things in his body that we talk about in so many of our sex education episodes none of that is happening for this man how Mm -hmm. is his mind and his prostate like like i have like legit health concerns because you're literally harming him by taking all of that away until he behaves how you want him to it's Mm -hmm. just oh the comments don't go to the comments guys (laughs) oh hey guys welcome back to just the tip with riley so today we're talking about sensory deprivation and what does this mean what is this when it comes to our sexuality or our sex life it's the deliberate removal of one or more of our senses during sex it can be a powerful way to heighten your partner's pleasure while reinforcing power dynamics For example, take away hearing and sight, and all of a sudden taste and touch are awakened in exciting new ways. If this tip isn't enough, subscribe to Patreon for the whole thing. I mean, I think overall men require, you know, there's, they have a lot of needs that need to be met and they're not all orgasms and corny stuff, right? I mean, that even goes into our next video that we're going to talk about is friendships and love and just, you know, bro time that if they're not getting it from their wife, they need those strong relationships. Absolutely. He mentioned this um, second video here about the sitting on the lap. Yeah. And that was just, it brought me back to like teenage years because I think it's okay. I haven't been dating for a while, but I think it's true. How many opportunities in life stem about where you're at? Okay. Maybe Christmas time, you're at a house party or some reason why you'd be perched on his knee, but Mm -hmm. we don't really make those same kind of moments that we used to have in different lifestyle. I think technology and the busyness of life can take away you sit on the couch side by side, or you sit in the car side by side. How many times do you really like curl up on your man's lap and hold him or let him hold you or just become this little cuddle puddle of, of love? Mm-hmm. And when she, he said she put her hands over my ears to block out the noise of life, I got tears in my eyes because I was like, for five minutes, a, do that with your man for five minutes a day for the next two weeks and come back in the comments and tell me how your life has changed because I guarantee you. <laughs> 
I guarantee fucking to you, you'll have a lot of sex that'll be all about you, lady. Right. <laughs> you'll get gifts, you'll get flowers, he'll take out the garbage, he'll remember to pick up the kids. All of those things will be done because you are pouring life into a man that needs it more than he can breathe. And it just, to me, would make every difference in the world. As much as we even greet customers at the spa with a hug, I'm almost like, mm-hmm. can everyone sit on their lap? Just just hold him for a minute because it would imagine how that would make people that don't even choose to stay for a session. Let's say they just walk in and check it out. They're a little nervous and they go. They'd be like, my life changed because some girl came and snuggled on my lap. She smelled like strawberries. And yeah. now I don't like worry so much about like my meeting I'm going to now because she just yeah. melted all my stress away. Like women have such powerful impacts. For and sure. that, that goes for friends too, right? When women hug each other, we soften, like we we literally, like the weight of the world can be shared and lessened through those little tiny moments of human connection. And this next mm-hmm. video is exactly that, like you said, it really yeah. highlights how important it is for men specifically. So let's hop into this one. Do you wanna actually introduce it? Cause I forgot which account it's from. So this one's from She's Not Your Rehab, another Facebook post. Love it, let's go. It's my gangster brother. Sapples. Sapples, what are you up to? Nothing, you just got up out of bed, bro. Oh, so you mate? You sick? Oh, please, I'm cool, bro. Oh, Galofay. What is it? Um, I can't talk for long, bro. I'm just, I'm just doing some work, but I was just thinking about you, and I just thought I'd ring up and say, love you, bro. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Is it just for some comfort from last night's game? <laughs> <laughs> Queensland suck. <laughs> I love you too, bro. Yeah, I love you, bro. What's up? What's happening? How are you, bro? Good, guys. How are you? I'm good. Just want to let you know, brother, that I'm thinking about you, and um, I love you, bro. <laughs> Fuck you, bro! So, man, what's going on? Not much, brother. What are you up to? Oh, just eating some chicken and rice, <laughs> Nice. I, I'm just, just calling to say I love you. Oh, I love you too, man. Kia ora, my brother. Kia ora, my brother. How are you? I'm good, bro. I'm good. And you? Yeah, I'm good. Just ringing just to say I love you and I'm proud of you. <laughs> oh, this way to fucking make me blush. <laughs> How you going, my brother? Yeah, not too bad, mate. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, bro. Hey, I can't talk long, but um, I just wanted to ring and say, man, I'm I'm so proud of you, bro, and I love you, eh? Yeah? Yeah, my brother. Hey. I was going to ring you and say, fuck it, I'm massive congratulations. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I just want to say, love you, bro. Oh, love you, Jules. <laughs> Cheers. I'll Always. talk to you later. Oh, you know, right, yo. What are you up to? Nah, nothing much here, I just at the gym. Oh, nice. Um, just wanted to say I'm thinking of you and I love you, bro. Oh, hey, what is it? Oh, nah, just, just thinking of you. That's gay. <laughs> no, I love you too. <laughs> Fuck you! Is that all good? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, kiss my ass. Oh, crack up. What do you, what do you know? Just want to say I love you, bro. I love you too, mate. Full send. You are so random, bro. Anyway, I'll talk to you soon. Okay, love you. Love you too. Later, Bolt. Hey, bro. Hey, um, I can't chat for long, but I just wanted to let you know that I'm, uh, I'm really proud of you, and I love you, bro. Yeah, cheers, bro. Love you too. <laughs> cheers. I just wanted to call just to let you know I love you, bro. Oh, all good, G. <laughs> so, bro, I'll talk to you later. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Later, bro. Yeah. So I'm just saying to you, I, I love you, bro. Oh, oh very nice. <laughs> yeah, I so. hope you do. <laughs> I do. Hi, James. Hello, my brother. How are you? Oh, good, thanks. And yourself? Yeah, going great. Look, I just uh, I don't have long. I'm just in the middle of something in the city, but I wanted to ring you and just let you know and remind you that I love you, bro. Cheers, <laughs> mate. Good on you. Appreciate it. Love you too, brother. Solely. 
you. Now I'm just calling to let you know, just thinking about you and I love you. Love you, bro. You all good? All good, brother. You all good? Yeah, all good. Happy Matariki, mate. Happy Matariki. <laughs> Bro, how are you? Good, good. Um, I was just thinking about you and I just wanted to tell you that I love you. I love you too, brother. <laughs> I hope you're having a good day. Do hey, you know why I love you? Why do you love me? Because you go. <laughs> love you, bro. Kiss my ass. <laughs> Yeah? Uh, I'm like crying, eh? I'm crying on the inside, bro. Uh -huh. Just thinking about you, brother. All good? <laughs> bro, these nuts resting on your chin, boy. Fuck! <laughs> hey, brother, how are you? Good. Yeah. yeah, good. Hey, listen, mate, I can't talk for long, but I was just um, thinking about you, and I just wanted to ring and tell you I love you, bro. Are you crying? <laughs> I'm crying on the inside. I'm crying on the inside. Okay, brother. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm just shooting off to work, so I'll, I'll catch you later. Uh, bye, bye. Love you, bro. I'll kick your ass later on. See you, bro. Love you, bro. Hey bro, Mateo here, co-founder of She Is Not Your Rehab. Thank you for joining our movement. When participating in the Love You Bro Day, you can choose to do it by yourself or grab some bros and form a team. It's super easy to get involved. Sign up and create a profile and then share it with your friends, whānau and anyone in your life that would love to sponsor you for the day. Get prepared to spend September the 6th wearing your heart on your face with a bold Love You Bro facing up to men's mental health. I love that video. These guys are so adorable. And what an interesting take. Like, I think it's so risky for guys to put themselves out there in that way. And the whole time that I watched this video initially, I was waiting, waiting for the, you know, the comment from the guy being like, yo, bro, are you gay? <laughs> or are, are you sick? Are you dying? But they right. didn't. And I like that the world is slowly changing. I think it's very generational, mm -hmm. but I think they're going in this direction that men can have these really intimate friendships with other men and talk to them about their feelings. And they so need it. Like us women, we've had that for since life existed, we have relied heavily on females um, or as a female, but I don't think men had that same comfort. So I love seeing the relationships. That's true. I mean, I, I have three best friends and every time I get off the phone, we always say, I love you. It's just a common thing. We tell each other in our episodes how much we love each other all the time. It's, it's a common thing for women to express, but to take a special moment, even though I mean, none of these conversations were long, right? It was yeah. like two minutes. You're about to go do something else. Someone popped in your mind and you just thought to call. And like yeah. that to me is so, it's almost old fashioned heartwarming because like, mm -hmm. once you want that out of like every grandpa ever, it's just like, I was thinking about you. I know you're busy, but Aww. I love you. Like off mm -hmm. you go. You, yeah. You're on cloud nine for the rest of the day because grandpa called. Like it's literally no, that. Think... That's sweet and that's simple. And I love the giggles out of the men. Like it was almost like shock giggles. The reactions were so sweet. And like, you could almost hear like the double take to be like, wait, really bro? Like, mm -hmm. that's why you call, well, I love you too, man. Like <laughs> it just, all the feels. I cried when I first watched it the first time. I think I got teary eyed the second time too. Y'all probably know me by now. I'm definitely the fluffier of the bunch, but it pulled your heartstrings just as much mm -hmm. because I mean, you, you were raised by an awesome dad, you're raising an awesome son and you see in all of those different ages and generational gaps, right. On yeah. how affection is communicated and the irony of our current times with technology that brings us together is that it can do that, but it also can separate us so, so much where we're yeah. always you know nose deep in a phone instead of having 
the actual phone call, like mm -hmm. ring, ring, ring is so old fashioned to like pick someone up or pick up the phone and actually call someone right. or even to their face and say it in person to be like, let's meet for a coffee. All I want to do was see your face, tell you, I love you. Those men are fulfilled. Yeah. Imagine if all their partners did that too. They'd be like, this is a, what's wrong. What's in the water today? Everyone well, loves me today. <laughs> it's being loved, seen and appreciated. And whether that's, mm. I mean, in reality, I'm sure they want that from their romantic partner as well. But even sure. if it comes from a guy, you're filling up this man's tank and, yes. and you have to fill it up or he's running on empty. And I, I love that I can see or get to witness men doing that in friendships with each other because it does it does seem a bit different. It's not something I'm used to seeing, but I hope I see more of it. I hope we see so much more of it. And you know what? It felt like it wasn't just the receiver of the call. The guy who made the call mm -hmm. too felt real good afterwards. Yeah. So it was a mutual exchange. They both got their tank refilled a little bit because mm -hmm. everyone said, I love you back, which mm -hmm. is, I mean, that's the best. No one likes saying I love you to dead silence or a thanks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's the fact that it, it was reciprocated. And so therefore this little moment, this little bonding situation amongst two bros, cousins, mm -hmm. buddies, best friends, team players, all come together just in this, this, it's a little tiny thing that can be so impactful. And I don't know about you, but every time someone calls and tells me they love me, I love it. I mean, you and I say that to each other five times a day and my mm -hmm. heart grows like the Grinch every time because I'm like, oh, she loves me. Like, it's just, it's sweet and it's wonderful and it's part of the human experience. And again, mm -hmm. society, women, media, pressure, we eliminate that from men's lives so often. They're supposed to like almost butch up about it. And I'm like, mm -hmm. but why? Like, why can't you be macho football player? and love your friends. Like it's that yeah. simple and they should be allowed to express it everywhere. I love videos like this. I love that it's literally on a big platform, spreading around lots of likes, lots of comments, people loving yeah. the feels because that stuff rubs off. It might encourage people, people watching and listening right now, go tell someone you love them. Someone no. unexpected, someone you haven't talked yeah. to in a while. But you know what? I'll relate this to the men and women. I mean, to the earlier part of our video that we were talking about. Mm. That I mean, I love you, and I've done this in relationships. Although I genuinely love them, I love you can be out of habit, right? So it's yes. the getting off the phone. Okay, love you, bye. Love you, bye. Have a good day, bye. Love you. That it's repetitive. It's habit. It's not necessarily like in that moment genuine. That I would encourage because I think. There is a lot of men that are mistreated, but I think they can also help their circumstance at times. So I would encourage them, place that call to your girlfriend or wife. Yes. And just like we saw with the guys, I think she would be equally as floored to be like, oh, thank you. Like, you know, I think that would genuinely yeah. be her reaction instead of just, well, I already tell her five times a day I love her. Right. But did you really invest in that conversation and and yeah. lead with like a good intention of letting her know how you feel about her i think it would go, go so far it's true it goes back to also not assuming that it's going to lead to something because right. if you're already in that weird dynamic where you assume every time he touches you he's just trying to get laid mm -hmm. then you might think oh he's being all sweet to me what does he want Right. And, and I think that's like the worst. I, you know what? It happens with teenagers to parents. All of a sudden your teenager that's a brat most times suddenly is all nice, right. nice to you. You're like, what do you want? What, do you want? what did you mm -hmm. do? Like, when's the report card coming? What exactly. happened? Like you just assume. And so if that's just a, I didn't want to like trigger cause anything. I just want to tell my wife or my girlfriend how much I care about her. That's going to send her to the moon for weeks. That stuff replays in a woman's head over and over on loop like a tape this is why we get so like hyper obsessive man when we like him because we replay those things non-stop our brains never stop so that will be in her head for a long time and so the next time he's in the kitchen two days later and grabs her little booty while she's cooking dinner she's gonna be like okay instead of what do you want yeah. such a different tone right it's so different so you're right totally goes both ways unexpected spontaneous and heartfelt i think is the and short it doesn't have to be a diatribe like when i go on my little rants it can literally be a two second phone call and we're done with it i mean you have melted me into tears the, the odd time where you make up a, a moment to send me like a special note to be like if i haven't told you in a while i really love you and i'm proud of you 
play every time because it, it matters so much. Oh, immediately lump in my throat. It matters mm. so much. And so imagine being a man that never hears that. And mm. all of a sudden his best bud that might even live across the country or in a different part of the world makes that point to call you, you know, remembers your birthday or some little thing, saw your post on Facebook and says, hey, bro, I'm really proud of you. I love you. The wife and I saw it. We're super excited for you. I got to run kids, blah, blah, blah. But I'll talk to you later. That guy's mm-hmm. going to be on cloud nine when he hangs up the phone. It's just it'll change. It'll change the whole world more love for everybody including in places like muse because if you don't have it we'll give it to you we'll you'll find it there for sure so true i love it just fueling men everywhere it's it's Mm -hmm. a community service we provide (laughs) (laughs) it's important imagine like just you know the peace of the world would be so different the politics Mm -hmm. of the world would be so different every little neighborhood would be so much happier and better if there's just that little extra injection of love here and there, I'm not sure your yeah. boss even said something nice to you. Like most people have asshole bosses, right? Like, we try to be nice bosses, but just taking those moments, we've seen it with our own staff where you call them and, and tell them that you recognize the hard work they've been doing, yeah. that you really appreciate them. That it makes a difference literally in every aspect of life. So to everybody watching and listening, take those moments, make that call today, not tomorrow. Make the call mm-hmm. right now while you're watching, press pause, Call up someone that you haven't talked to in a while. Tell them what they mean to you. And then come back and report in the comments because I'd love to hear about it. I love that. Me do too. So on that note, I think this wrap this one's up, but let's send everyone over to Patreon because they got to subscribe over there because you get twice as many episodes over there every Wednesday exclusive and every Sunday night with Riley for Just the Tip where she gives you the naughtiest sex advice, industry advice, insight into new things you didn't know your body or your partner's body could do. You're going to learn so much naughty shit from her. (laughs) So good. I'm learning with you guys. I'm having fun. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and you can find all our social media in the caption below. Give us a follow, and we will see you guys next time. I'm using the mic.